welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door and you are welcome to my weekly sewing vlog. So this is where I tell you all about what I've been up to sewing this week and my plans for future sewing plans. <laughs> so I'm here in my sewing room. It's Saturday. It is horrendously windy and horrible and apparently this storm is called Justine, so we'll have to see what Justine brings us today. But I'm really happy to be up here and it's nice and cosy. I have my cup of coffee in... I don't know if I've shown you this cup. This was another one that Keris bought me for Christmas. So really, really pretty. I love a little cup. I am I will drink out of a mug, but I love, <laughs> I love a little cup. And um, yeah, I generally finish something out of a smaller cup, whereas the mug goes cold. So yeah, I'm up here. I have my coffee. Um, I've been doing a bit of ironing and making just a few little plans for the day. I have my Husqvarna back. So she arrived back yesterday by courier and um, I'm always really worried when I send her off to be fixed. And it's not the fixing, it's the courier journey. I hate it. I'm so worried that they're going to throw it around and I'm sure they did throw it around. The entire box of tools and stuff was all over the box. Now, you know, what do you do? They're so busy. But yeah, it works. It works. I brought it up here yesterday after picking it up um, from my brother next door. It got dropped next door because I was out. And yeah, brought it home, brought it up here, took it out of the box. Like my heart was racing, <laughs> hoping it was going to actually work. I tried it with the most awkward viscose jersey and it sewed. And it's just absolutely brilliant. So what John told me, um, John is in the Singer Sewing Centre in Waterford. That's difficult to say. And he's just, he's just a magician when it comes to um, servicing sewing machines. So if you live in Ireland, John is the man to go to and I'll put a link to his website below and every time I go on the website I'll look at all the sewing machines. It's just what you do. And he told me that basically it's where the needle goes up into the machine, whatever this mechanism is, was just worn out. So I did say to him that I had difficulty putting needles in lately and making sure that they were perfectly vertical. I always felt that it was slightly off. So I asked him how did that happen and he just basically said that it's just something that happens with wear and tear and it was great because the part was actually under warranty and I had to pay for the labour and the courier so yeah she's back and I'm going to be putting her to the test today because I have a little bit of sewing planned for today. And the first thing I'm actually going to do today and I don't actually need the sewing machine for it is I'm going to cover the buttons for Keris's coat because that's all it needs and then it's finished and I'm going to drop it into our dry cleaners for a good proper professional press. So I have to cover eight buttons and I have my velvet ready. I have loads of velvet left over from the Irish dancing dresses so I have loads of that. I'm going to cover them today and sew them on and then she's done at last. I can't believe how long it's actually taken me to do this coat but um, yeah, it's just yeah, slow progress and I've been really, really busy with the shop. So I just have not been able to get up here at all to do any sewing. And the other thing I'm going to do today, because I just want a nice, simple sew, is I'm going to make Jason another t-shirt. And I made him a t-shirt just before Christmas, I think, and I made him another one since. And a lot of people asked me what pattern I used. And basically I, I cut a pattern from one of his favourite t-shirts. So rather than try out loads of patterns to get a, a good fit, I just said to him, do you know what, go to the wardrobe, pick out one of your favourite t-shirts, you know, one that you really, you go for all the time and I'll make one like that. So what I'm going to do today is, I've already made a pattern, but I'm going to do a little video on how I cut a pattern from the t-shirt, because I think that's really, really handy. Because I've... I've, I've done that over the years where Keras might have a sweatshirt and we would just make a pattern and yeah so I'm going to show you how I did that. It's, it's really it's really simple and I have a few little tricks that I've learned over the years so I'm happy to pass them on. <laughs> and I've just done all the editing now on the Billy sweatshirt dress so along so I'm going to upload that in the next couple of days and I just did a little edit video to add into it because 
you know the way I've been uncomfortable around the neckline and I've tried two different fixers for myself and Keras so I've just done a little video to add into that video. So today I'm actually going to make a t-shirt for Jason out of the brushed interlock that I got into the shop recently. So it's a really lovely fluffy like it's so fluffy <laughs> it's so gorgeous and I got it in this anthracite anthracite and I got fuchsia and they've sold really well and I have it pre-washed and dried so I'm going to make that today so I'm actually really looking forward to making that today and the only things I have made recently are I made Keras this Billy sweater top out of this lovely glitter jersey so this was one of our new fabrics during the week and it sold really well it's so nice like it's just so lovely and I added in some of the new cuffing we got and basically I wanted to try one of the neck, fi neck fixers and she chose this fabric and chose the cuffing to go with it so there's enough cuffing in a packet to do a cuff and a waistband and um, because Keras wears the smallest size there is a nice little bit left over so I might be able to use that for cuffs for my niece or whatever so that's the Billy sweater and I made her the smallest size and it fits her really really nicely and then as well as that I made myself another deer and doe arum dress I'm going to grab it it's just on the ironing board and I made it out of this new viscose that um, I got in the shop as well because I wanted to try it out. I haven't had this one before. And this is the Arum dress. So it's a real dead easy. It's a brilliant little pattern because it's just one piece for the front and it's got a centre piece on the back where the shaping goes and it just works. And it's got the grown on sleeves. So it's just one of those dresses that if you just fancied making yourself like a little tunic dress you can whip it up really fast and yeah I really like it. I made the size 38 and I made the 38 in the viscose twill tulip fabric oh, a couple of months ago and it fit really lovely. Now maybe there's a little bit more stretch or a bit more give in the twill but I did find this one a closer fit. Either that or I've got a bit wider <laughs> so I'm not quite sure so when I put this on I found it quite tight just around the rib cage so I just I pinned at the back where I put a little pin at the back where I found it a bit tight and I just let it out down the two sides two seams at, down the middle of the back and that just gave me that do you know what just half an inch actually makes all the difference sometimes doesn't it so yeah, this is lovely. Really like that. And what else have I been up to? Oh, I got the new Simply Sewing magazine lately as well. I would love to subscribe to it, but the shipping is just too expensive to Ireland. So what I did recently was I asked in my local news agent if they could add it to their um, to their buys every month. So they just they get it in for me. And every now and again, I pop into the news agent, just ask them, do you have my magazine? And it's there and it's you know it's one of those little perk things during the during the week or during the month so I actually really like the patterns in this month's one so this one to me looks quite like the indigo dress so that's quite like the tilly and the buttons indigo you can make it out of stretch fabric and it just looks really nice so I've read the instructions and there's not even a facing or a binding for the neck you just turn down a neck bend and I think I might try this now in one of maybe the viscose jerseys or the modal tensils just to basically to try out the sewing machine. So I, yeah, that looks really nice. And the other one that came is a shirt dress and I do love a shirt dress. And it's got my dippy hem. <laughs> so <laughs> most people just call this a dipped hem, but yeah, I just coined the dippy hem phrase and that's view C where the model is wearing and it's quite a dip on the hem and I just think that looks really nice. It's also got a straight across hem and it's got like a shirt tails hem so it's got the three extremes and it's got a grown on sleeve, a nice little collar that co looks quite si similar to the Myasotis dress and it's got nice kind of like a little bit of gathering there at the yoke 
So yeah, I think that looks really nice. That would be lovely out of um, like a linen viscose. I've just put in an order for some nice linen viscoses and maybe even cottons, other just viscoses. Yeah, I just, yeah, the, the brain is going here. So I think that looks really, really nice. And I've been doing a bit of knitting. <laughs> so if you're not interested in my knitting, it's probably good to say goodbye now. But I'm just going to show you just what I've been up to. So I pulled out a cardigan that I had started, like, we're talking about years ago. I can't even remember where I bought the, the yarn for it. But I already had the back and one of the fronts done. And it's a really simple little cardigan. I had only bought the wool to make the short version or the short sleeved version, but I managed to get long sleeves. I managed to use this version and get long sleeves out of it. And that's just because I have short arms, so it was great. <laughs> so it's knit out of this grey wool. I, I don't know what the composition is actually in it, but it's a nice little pattern, very, very simple. And I've got all the pieces done now. So I'm going to look into how do I block these pieces because I have knit for years, but I never blocked, never did that. Just, you know, made all the bits, sew them together and wore them. So I'm going to get on to my good friend, Tess, who is an amazing knitter. And I'm going to ask her, what would she do to block all these pieces? Because that's a new, that's a, a new thing for me to do. And then I'm going to have a cardigan that <laughs> was started so many years ago. So I've got all those bits done now. It's completely ready. Apart from I have to knit just a few rows around the neckband. It's really, really simple. There isn't even bands going up the front of this cardigan. So it's great. And in the meantime, in some of the sales online, I bought this pattern, which I thought looked really nice. So, and again, it's a, quite a thick yarn. So it's knit on, I think it's six millimeter needles. Yes, six millimeter needle, so it's it's going to be a quick one, and it's just it's actually got a pattern in it, but it's knit over like an eight row pattern, really really simple, and yeah, it's coming together really nicely. It's just basically like a rib, so it's like a fisherman's rib. Now, what I will say about the pattern is, it doesn't have a picture of the back, and I'm on the back obviously because that's where you start. And there's a, there is a like a chevron pattern going up the back that I'm not really going to appreciate until it's off the needles. But, no, oh, that's the wrong side of it. <laughs> but it's got like a panel down the, the middle and it's got a very simple pattern to make the rib look like it goes off in two directions. So it's interesting, but I actually had no idea that it was going to be part of the pattern because there's no picture of the back. <laughs> so maybe we're spoiled, or maybe I'm spoiled now by sewing patterns that give you line drawings and pictures and all that kind of jazz. And on this, it's like a little, it's like a little booklet and there's loads of pictures. And there's actually pictures of some of the knitting as well. And there's pictures of other ones you can buy. There's actually pictures at the back of what it looks like in other colours, which I thought was a great idea. But yeah, no photograph of the back. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. So that's what I'm doing in the evenings. Um, I do, I have found for the last couple of months that I'm actually quite obsessive about <laughs> my shop. So I'm finding that I'm finishing all my orders, finishing everything, having dinner, and then I'm going back to my computer and I'm researching and I'm changing around the website and all of a sudden then it's late and I haven't actually relaxed and then I because I haven't relaxed I'm just not sleeping properly so what I'm doing now is I'm trying to set more of a routine and I'm sure this is probably like so many people who are working from home um just I've been working from home now for years <laughs> so I think I'm working at home now since 2015 actually so you'd think I should be in a routine by now, but no, I get really obsessive about things. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually finishing work, I'm closing the door, <laughs> I'm taking some quality time to change into my pyjamas, and I'm sitting down and I'm doing my knitting. So I'm doing something that's still creative and interesting, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm relearning it, um, but I'm sleeping so much better, so it's great. It's like I'm just having my tune out from work and getting on with my hobby. I find that 
if it's late, I just, I don't feel like coming up here to my sewing room. I'm just kind of too tired to do that, but I can actually knit, which is great. So yeah, it's been a good week. I'm going to sign off now and say goodbye. And I'm gonna get straight on with doing the buttons. And we're, this is Saturday, so we're going to do our live YouTube again tomorrow evening, which we are, really really looking forward to every week so we do the live if you haven't tuned in it's at seven o'clock on a sunday evening so that we're in ireland so it's seven o'clock our time and myself and Karis really enjoy it we really look forward to it because it's it's a chat with our lovely sewing community i learn so much the live chat is just electric there's just so much going on and it's it's just so lovely it's like meeting up with a bunch of friends every week and yeah we really like it and yeah so rather than waffling on I'm actually going to say goodbye and if I don't see you at the live I will see you in my next video bye for now